is going on guys? It's your boy Void here. And today I wanna to talk about some tech internships. Um, specifically about how to get more interviews for these tech internships. So just to give a little bit of background, um, I've interned at Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and EA. And I'm gonna say that a lot of people think that initially when they see that resume or they see my LinkedIn or social medias, they automatically assume that I'm like really good at coding or like I'm good at these coding interviews and all these things, but that's not really the case. So really it comes down to, there was a lot of struggle and a lot of people don't get to see that. They only get to see my highlight rail from my social media, essentially. I don't post every failure I've had on my social media because frankly, there'd be way too many. <laughs> so I think I have gotten more rejections than most people have total number of applications, or at least most people that I know. So don't get discouraged. Let's talk about how to get some of these interviews. Tip number one, um, you're gonna wanna start early. And what I mean by that is, you want to start applying today, now, as soon as you possibly can. And I know that not every application is open, but make sure you apply to all the applications that are open. And secondly, if it's not open, there's really like two things you can do if it's not open. So the first of those is you can tap into your network. Say I wanted to apply to Google, but their application isn't open yet. Well, lucky for me, last season I interviewed with Google um, and I have a recruiter who knows me. So what I would do is I would send an email to that recruiter. I would say, hey, I'm looking to apply for Google for this coming year. Uh, either for as an intern or as a full-time software engineer. And if you have a deadline, that, that's a good time to mention it. Say something along the lines of, hey, I interviewed with you guys last year. I really enjoyed the process. I'm hoping to do so again, but I am a bit concerned with as far as timelines go because I have this deadline coming up on whatever date you might have a deadline. If you don't have any deadlines, that's okay, still reach out. You can inquiry about the application status at the very least. Um, that way you can have a general timeline of when the application will open. If you're really cool with the recruiter, maybe they might even ask for your resume right off the bat. Depends on the company, depends on your relationship with that recruiter. All right, so what if you don't have a network? What if you haven't networked enough or maybe you haven't gone through a recruiting season yet? So that brings us to number two, building a network. This is one of the most important yet overlooked things in the technical field. A lot of people think, as long as I can code, I can get good jobs. And I am sure that as long as you can code, you can get a job, but it might not be the job of your preference. So that's why the network is so important. Um, the first thing that comes to mind whenever I say network is career fairs, but I don't generally like those for networking just because there are so many people gathered in one place and these recruiters, they're talking to a hundred different candidates. They're drinking bottles of water because they're tired of talking. They're not going to remember most people. And that's just a fact. So what I recommend more is if you're in university, um, it's, this is really good because usually universities, their computer science or engineering departments will host events with these companies, whether that be like tech talks or like some kind of social or lunch or something. Make sure you go to these events, even if they take place on Zoom and you think it's gonna be awkward. You have to get over this awkwardness. That way you can start talking to people. And once you've talked to enough companies, you start getting better at talking to companies and having good conversations that aren't just, hi, here's my resume. 
So make sure you're going to these smaller events and here's a really big pro tip. Make sure you stay until the end of the event. And at the end, talk to the recruiters or engineers one-on-one and ask them some questions about either the talk they just gave. Um, you can talk about your, like, if, you, if you're passionate about their company, you can bring something up that they do that you are really passionate about. Or if you have like a strong opinion about something the company does, bring it up. It makes for a really interesting conversation and it's not a setting where they're talking to a hundred people. Like you're, there aren't going to be many people that are going to get one on one time because most people don't stay after the talk ends. So that's a big, big tip. Make sure you guys utilize that, please. So the next thing for networking is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is interesting because there's a good way to utilize LinkedIn and there's a bad way to use, utilize LinkedIn. Now the bad way is, hi, I'm whoever, I'm really interested in your company, um, could you refer me? <laughs> or I want a job here. What are they supposed to do with that? Like, you have to give them something to work with. So don't just reach out to people on LinkedIn because you want them to like refer you or because you want them to help you get a job. Reach out with the intention of learning. And what I mean by that is, if I were to cold email someone, I really like the Xbox product, for example. So if I were to email someone, I would probably look up software engineer, um, Xbox Live, and I would message one of them. And I would be like, hey, I use Xbox Live very often, um, or I, like, I use it on like a daily basis or bi-daily or whatever the case may be. Um, I really like the platform. Uh, I had a few ideas for it and was, uh, or maybe not even ideas. You just say, you can ask for advice on how they got to work on such a cool product, how they got to where they are today, because I guarantee you that everybody has a really interesting story and you can learn from these stories. Like once you start hearing them, it's easy to become engaged in these stories and really start connecting with the person as opposed to connecting to someone because of a title. Now that leads me to my next part, which is mentors. These are your first line of network. These are the people who you aspire to be like, or they have qualities that you admire, and they also want to help you become the best you possible. They wanna help you get whatever company you want, whatever like, passion job you want, all that stuff. They, they just want to see you grow. And these people are really useful because you're, you can feel free to ask them, Hey, can you tech, uh, can you mock interview me? Hey, can you refer me? These people should be your closest group of people. And you should try to have a few mentors that both you connect with both ways so they like you you like talking to them and y'all generally have fun conversations that are also developmental so let's say your mentor refers you and you now have a recruiter email the recruiter asks you okay um, thanks for your interest can you please send me a copy of your most updated resume well you better have that resume updated step number three the resume the first tip about resumes I wanna give you guys is make sure that you try to quantify things. When you quantify things, quantify, quantify things, it makes it sound so much better and you get to show actual measured impact. And at tech companies, what's more important than the actual numbers? So for example, I have a position here um, where I was an officer in HACS, the Hispanic Association of Computer Scientists. And 
I could have said that my role was to raise money and funds in order to continue social events or to fund corporate events, something along those lines. Instead, I decided to say, I raised over $50,000 in three months by putting together corporate packages for the 2017 school year. And this is a lot more specific. It's a very like, it's a very um, tangible like achievement because they get to actual, actually see the impact you had, see the time frame you had, and it's just, it just sounds a lot better. Cool, on to tip number two, action words. And what I mean by that is I said that I raised money. So I use the word raised. I don't want to keep using the word raised everywhere. I've seen resumes where people say, oh, I created a program to add numbers. And then right under that, they say, created a UI for the program that adds numbers. And then the third one says, uh, created a web service for this program. You don't want to keep using the same words, guys. Like that, that's like the very base level of it. Do not keep reusing your words. Um, secondly, use better words if where you can. So you can say developed, you can say integrated, you can say a whole lot of things. Just look up some synonyms of whatever word like comes into your mind right away and I'm sure you'll find some good ones in there. Um, my next tip is going to be to please keep your resume well formatted. I don't want to see a date unaligned with another date. I don't wanna see something that's spelled wrong. This just looks sloppy and doesn't, you eliminate yourself before they even get to the actual achievements you have on your resume. So make sure you don't like get yourself initially eliminated right off the bat. Um, another thing is please keep it to one page. I've heard from many recruiters that they do not like multi-page resumes. It generally doesn't come off well. You probably can get it to one page anyways. Um, if you're like a PhD student or something, you may be able to have another page but generally try to keep it to one. Another thing is if you don't have a lot of work experience, that's okay. You can compensate for that. You can compensate for that by saying, oh, I did this personal project where I created a website for my friend's business. Or, oh, I created this personal uh, project where I made a Chrome extension that's allows users to track their stock values or just anything of the sort. If you've never made a personal project, you can also list class projects. Um, just try to do the harder class projects if you can um, and make sure you describe like what that project was and what you, like what the complexities behind it were. Cool, so that brings us to the fourth and final tip be proactive. This is the most important one. It kind of encompasses all the other tips because when you're proactive, you can kind of tell. So most of the people I know that did really well and are doing really well were people who are generally proactive. They might not be the like most naturally smart people, like myself, I, I don't consider myself naturally smart at all, but they're very proactive. They're formatting their resume, they're making a network, they're going to these small company events, they're giving their elevator pitches to people, they know a lot of people, they're, they're mass applying to everything. Just be proactive and try hard. So people don't like to look like they're trying too hard and I don't understand why. A lot of people want to look cool and they want to think they want others to think that oh, I can get these things without even preparing. I've never even studied for an interview. Like it's not cool. Try hard, just don't be afraid to try your hardest and 
if you do and you are proactive and you make this a priority, I think that you can get a tech internship and I believe that every single one of you watching is being proactive just by watching this video, which tells me that you are going to go out there and you are going to kick some. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like, subscribe, favorite, whatever the case may be. And if you want more of these tech uh, tips, please let me know. Like, I want to know what is useful for you guys since that is the whole point of this channel. Anyways, see you guys later.